I believe that love is the most powerful and pure form of energy. At the core of our spirits, that's what we're made of. It's the energy that projects from that core and connects us to each other. The more I live, the more I see a piece of myself in everyone and a piece of everybody I know in me, and I've just become more connected with that, you know? There's a kind of a duality to what I do and, and who I am. In that way, I'm just out there and, and connecting with so many people, but then at the same time, a part of me wants to just be at home and, and enjoy a, just a peaceful, quiet time with my family. And so life is a journey and life leads you sometimes in directions where you don't necessarily imagine yourself or envision yourself going, but you know it's the right way to go, and so you just follow. Life is good. <laughs> for me, uh, you know, one of my greatest reasons for living is my children, and, uh, you know, they really have taught me, I think, the most about life, you know. It's amazing when you see children grow and they come from such a space of innocence that it helps you sort of remember that innocence and you and and return to it a bit. So and I think that's what what we lose and and I think that the system that we live in is designed to take that innocence away from us. So when we see it in the children, it sort of gives you this idea of like, oh, I had that once, you know? I had that beautiful innocence, that purity. I had that once, and I really have to get that back, you know? Reggae music is really the kind of music that we grew up with. I was making all kinds of music, and when I started playing reggae music, it was a real spiritual change for me, and I realized uh, that music could be about so much more. It could have a spiritual message, a message of revolution, a message of peace, of love, and connectedness, and I found that in reggae music, and as soon as I started writing reggae music, all those themes really just became so much a part of my life. Sam is, you know, he's, I mean, he's a, he's an incredibly great brother. He really helps carry me through and we carry each other through a lot of situations uh, where things get hard and you just need somebody to help lift you up. And we've been playing music together for 15 years now, maybe, and throughout all of the bands that I've been in, throughout all the projects I've had, he's been the one person that's been a part of, of everything that I've done. This is a warning to all of the nations Don't turn your back on November A simple warning to all of my people Yo, this is a desperate and dark hour We got to teach them job in this crucial time that we're living in We got to lift them up and pierce down to the heart of the body We got to love them and teach them to reach for my side Try to come tempt you and test you You will find yourself somewhere along the way yeah. Karma, of course, is the idea that what you put out comes back to you It's a long-term thing and the effect of all of that karma of all of the terrible things that as, as a species we've been perpetuating on this planet for hundreds of years thousands of years really you know and now I think we live in a time where that karma is becoming very apparent not only do you see natural disasters all over and you know the world just becoming more and more uninhabitable in a lot of ways it's not just something that we're gonna be able to 
fix in a day, which is the hard thing, is that now we're at a real tipping point. And, and you know, some say it's too late already, but I believe that, you know, it's never too late to make a change, to make a positive change. This is a warning to all of the nations Don't turn your back on the vampires A simple warning to all of my people Shut up! This is a desperate and dark hour fight is individual too because just as anybody else we're living in this world and we're often tempted by uh, you know material things and and tempted by many things in this world and you know yeah you know we bought our new shoes today <laughs> People becoming more intelligent and moving towards a further evolution in terms of, of technology, in terms of what we can do, things we can see. I, I don't believe that, that that in itself is inherently evil. I just believe that the manipulation of it is, is where the evil comes into play. It's using those TVs as tools to get people to, uh, you know, sit down and basically turn their brains off and stop thinking. It's not always that that one way is the right way for everybody. I have the philosophy that as long as you're not hurting anything, as long as you're not hurting any living creature, then you know, what you do is really your business, right? Culture is a double-edged sword in that way, that, you know, there are so many positive things from many cultures all around the world, and I completely celebrate that, and, and I find so much beauty in that. And at the same time, there's a lot of things that need to just be let go for people to move forward, you know? And there's so many cultures that, uh, you know, put women on a lower level than men, but really I think uh, we need to do, in this time to really learn, we need to do the opposite and put the women up on a pedestal so we can really learn from them. From my wife, who's my partner for a, a long time, and I've learned so much about compassion about really being open. As men, you know, we're taught to be so tough and not show our emotions and it's wrong, you know? I mean, it's not, it's completely unnecessary. The society that we live in is such a male-driven society and it's angry and it's about uh, fighting with each other and dominance and, and that's, these are all masculine things and look at the way society is going. It's, it's going in a really bad direction. You know, we live in very dark times and you guys have seen it here in, in Paris, in Nice, you know, in all over Europe, Asia, where we live in America, where we live in Hawaii, there's, you know, it's it's hard to sometimes to wake up and see the goodness in the world. As individuals, we really do have the most power. And I think that when we connect with each other, that power becomes magnified and multiplied by more than just the sum of who we are. So let the sheep sleep and wake up the liar.
giving people this idea that everything is a competition, that uh, you know the things that you consume are what makes you the person you are, and the things that you own describe who you are as a person. And that system divides people. And then once you get people divided, then you can take their power away. And that's the power of thinking that you can make a difference and thinking that you can make a change. Once people start uh, realizing that, that that power lies within them and they stop giving that power to the system, that's going to be the basis, a real basis of change is just people realizing that they can go to their communities, they can help each other rather than helping the system, they can help themselves by helping each other, by coming together with real people rather than corporations or corporate entities, you know? You know, I just want to thank you guys so much for for taking us around today and taking such good care of us. We, you know, we've had so much fun so far, and I'm just happy to know you guys. And thanks for all the good work that you do. It's Mike Love, and it's been a great time here on La Sofa. Aloha.